Mind you, this is not a review. This is just me playing the game until the first game over. Let's go take a look. Hello, uh, YouTube. Martha here, and this time we play a little game of Boulder Dash. If you can stand uh, the noise. <laughs> this game actually was first brought out on the, Atar uh, the Atari, the Atari 8-bit systems, and then the Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum, but it also had a MS-DOS port. This uh, port is running in CJ, and I've seen better ports actually, but uh, yeah. So let's see. I think I have to press shift. Yeah, shift and the cursor keys. Uh, the Atari ST version actually uh, has a very nice smooth scrolling, as well as the Commodore 64 version, the Amstrad version as well. And this is not so much smooth scrolling, but it actually has a uh, has a lot of that. Well, it has the same gameplay. Um, yeah, this 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 color palette that uh, cyan, purple, and white and black. That's actually the most uh, common co color palette. The uh, CGA graphics standard is actually ca capable of outputting more, um, or at least a couple from a sixteen uh, color palette. But uh, yeah, this this seems to be the. Uh, Predominant, uh, predominantly used uh, color palette. So everything is kind of uh, candy stick, <laughs> sugar cane uh, colored. And it actually plays quite well, albeit a bit slow. I think the, uh, the Atari version actually plays a bit faster than the Commodore 64 version as well. Um, and this basically, the, the cool thing is actually that um, uh, this this color palette is actually the palette that was used in the original as well, at least this level. All levels had different color palettes. Well, you have to uh, pick up the diamonds and avoid those uh, flashing baddies. And uh, yeah, you have to make sure that nothing lands on your head. You can shift around uh, boulders. Uh, by depressing uh, shift and then a direction, like I'm doing now, so you don't move, and that way you can dig or shift a boulder without moving in the way, like like this. Um, yeah, get enough boulders, and you uh, will be able to go to the next level. The door opens. You can actually see uh, the amount of. Uh, the amount of uh, diamonds that are uh, that are needed to open the uh, uh, the op open the door. Uh, it's ten. So now the door opens actually, and you can actually pick up all the extra diamonds if you want for extra points. And you just saw that flashing in the dark background, and that's actually uh, extra lives. So you are able to get extra lives as well. So a very nice game. And uh, even on the PC, on the old PC, this is actually not a bad game. Um, it's a bit smoother on the, the home console systems, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it works. It has the same levels, but it looks a bit bland. It looks a bit... Uh, it looks a bit the same. <laughs> of course, there's no color variation. Oh, and I die. There's no color variations in the level, so. And I guess I'll play this until it's uh, game over. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is among my favorite games. And uh, I think the Commodore 64 version. Uh, rocks. I uh, played that the most, and uh, I may actually. Well, you just you just check out my uh, my channel. You you'll find Boulder Dash. I've played that a lot of times. Um, the Amstrad TPC version, the Atari version, and the uh, and 
the Kona 64 version. Those are, in my opinion, the best looking versions of it. And uh, let's see, I really need to make some room. Um, whoops, now if I do this, whoops. Yeah. The thing is with this level is that you, if you make don't make enough room, you can lock yourself in and the boulders won't fall all the way down and you'll be stuck. So you really have to plan where you're going. Okay, I guess this works. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, to get to the next door. Yeah, I'm kind. Of, I'm kind of going on an old, <laughs> an old Emma's DOS kick here. Uh, been enjoying the old games, and uh, yeah, you can, you have to go around, I believe. Oh, there's one too. So I mean, and that's that's the fun part about these old. Uh, and was DOS based games that they actually retain all the playability of the more fancy uh, home computer versions but often is lacking in sound and um, whoa. <laughs> yeah I think I'll be able to open the door one more and there's the door so yeah, this basically the early nine and the early eighties actually was a an era where the home computers basically had the same resolution as the PC versions, uh, as the PC games, but somehow uh, the home computers often had more elaborate uh, musical and graphical capabilities. So. That was a time when home computers uh, had superior games. I mean, just just look just look up uh, Boulder Dash and see how many versions exist. And uh, the Spectrum version, for example, I mean, it uses less colors than uh, the Commodore 64 version or uh, the Atari version, but it's uh, it's a lot nicer actually. Okay, one down. And now I make, I, I just create a ton of diamonds. And what I like about this game is that it is a puzzle and action game at the same time. And it really takes uh, some planning. Uh, even the animations. I mean, this game is really... <laughs> Uh, looking quite bland if you compare it to the uh, to the home computer versions, but yeah, this was at an era where the uh, PC still was in its infancy, and basically, I mean, it had uh, more uh, it had more possibilities for expansions and stuff, but uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, the best suited game system actually. But as you can see, I mean, just my, from me playing uh, the Kano 64's version uh, for years and years and years and years, for me makes it actually possible to... Ah, uh, this is a bonus level. I have to crash the boat, make the boulder crash. Ah! <laughs> okay, I'll just run into this dude and it doesn't cost me a life. Well, it does cost me a life, but I'm not sure. No, I don't. Okay, similar, uh, similar play field, and I think you have to dig a lot of uh, tunnels for these uh, big blocks to discover and rattle around in before they uh, they zoom on in. I mean, you on you. I'm tired. I just, uh, I'm actually doing, pulling a night shift. So, 
Yeah, I'm on call, so. Okay. Another one. And basically perform the same maneuver as I did uh, in the other field. Just walk over them, and if, if it's okay, they just uh, they will just leave me alone for a bit. Oh no! <laughs> they immediately <laughs> homing on me. Well, uh, you get uh, you get the drift. I think I still have a couple of uh, lives left, but uh, I'm not sure. I think this is uh, no, I don't have a couple of lives. Left, so. Okay, so this is different because okay. Oops. So that's actually the way to go. You have to dig a, a lot of uh, tunnels and uh, let them lose their way in it, and you have to go from uh, left to right. On the Spectrum version you could actually walk uh, the little guy, his name is Rockford, uh, very fast and you could actually walk him off the screen. <laughs> and um, in this version uh, actually the game screen keeps up with it, with the little dude. And uh, I seem to have remembered it wrong, but yeah. Okay, so this is uh, a bit of uh, walkways for these things to get lost in. Okay, so. And of course, they are coming after you, so whoa! <laughs> and I don't think the, uh, the door is open yet. And it's coming after me. Well, I'm entering the door anyway. So <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell if the door opens. You hear this, this noise. And on the, on the Commodore 64, it actually was very, um, very clear, but on this system, it wasn't. Here, you also have to make a bit of room for those uh, wandering things. And you just have to open them up and uh, get to a safe spot that probably is somewhere there. <laughs> so let them uh, disappear for a bit. Uh, I can indeed push forward one of these blocks. Yeah, and if the last one is coming down, I'm gonna throw one on, on him. Yes. Whoops. Uncool. Oh God, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to be toast. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> well, you get the drift. And actually, I think the. Uh, oh, let's play some more. So I, I guess I need to uh, excavate this a bit more. It's really, it plays really slow, but it's nice. I like this a lot. Bullet Ash. And even on faster machines, this actually runs at a pretty decent speed. They, they manage to calibrate uh, the speed correctly, so uh, you don't have to use slow-mo or have to use a very old machine necessarily in order to play this. Okay, let's hide behind my little, whoops, rock. Okay. Oh, 
As you can see, this is not the way to go about it. About it. Uh, yeah. So there's someone who might actually come back. So they move around the, uh, the space in a particular fashion. Okay, if I now manage to go... Okay, I'm safe. And I'm not sure if the door is open yet, and where that door may actually be. I'm guessing it's down here. Ah, the door is open. Cool. Unexpectedly, I was able to show you yet another level. Oh gosh, yeah, this, this is cool. Uh, these uh, walls are actually magical walls. And uh, you have to uh, let stones fall upon them to uh, they create diamonds. But you also have to lock in uh, this growing Anubis stuff because it's really, uh, it really will grow and Because otherwise it'll it'll uh, spread and take over the entire playing field. So you have to lock in the that growing stuff from over there. So there's just like so. Okay, and there's this issue that there's just this one uh, little diamond over there. Um, and now excavate. Whoops! Yeah. <laughs> um, well, and you excavate underneath uh, the walls, and then if you let rocks fall on the walls, they turn into diamonds, so you collect more. And you have to collect 50 diamonds, so that's quite a bit. So, you do this by moving down towards the uh, amoeboid growth, like so. Hmm. I managed to secure that pretty, pretty well, I guess. Like so. Hmm, better than I ever did. First, now I need one for the microphone. I think that stuff is locked in. Cool. Yep, it's locked in. So, what else? Well, get some of those loose diamonds. And of course, don't let some of these others escape. Make sure there's enough room below for the uh, rocks to fall through.
Yeah, and it, it takes a while, uh, you know, to, uh... Oh, whoops. <laughs> well, and if they if they hit the, the wall, then they turn into that. They fall on top, but, uh... I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean. So if I dig this out... Whoops, sorry. Um, well, you have to take my word for it, I guess. Um, is this game over? Yeah, it's game over. Uh, a great game, and I like it a lot, and it's Bullet Dash, and it's a classic, and a must-have on any home computer system, and I think if you collect classic DOS games, you should own this as well. Uh, yeah. I think it's a classic. <laughs> Mark signing off, and I'll be back with another video soon.